Okay, we are going live on YouTube with a video. Um, I've got a new seller, a new reseller here from Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the shroom is here. My name is Corey. 10K on the way. That was an amazing, uh, that was an amazing post. I, I really enjoyed that. Seller stories on YouTube right now. My guest kind of canceled at the late last minute. Yes, it's Corey. Uh, my guest canceled at the last minute, so I'm here with Elliot, who is a new reseller. Uh, he's a graphic designer and a new reseller from Phoenix. Uh, come, come ch check us out on YouTube. If you don't, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, um, look up Mighty Mushroom Nike. I did that crazy Nike haul. If you haven't seen it, check it out later. But uh, come and check it out. Mighty Mushroom Nike, you'll find my channel. Or Mighty Mushroom eBay, you'll find my channel. Uh, but we are. I'm gonna keep. I'm just gonna keep this live, and uh, we'll just we'll just check it out, man. So so Elliot, tell us how you got started reselling. Um. Well, I started like seriously doing it probably about two or three months ago. Um, and literally like I had always bought and sold a few things here and there. And, um, I tried my hand at flipping a couple cars and motorcycles and stuff like that, which was a lot of fun, but, um, there's a lot of, uh, a risk involved and a lot of capital that you need to buy and sell cars and things like that. So, um, those were cool experiences, but I literally was just hanging out one night flip it through my YouTube channel, and I think it was a Rally Roots video popped up. Oh, nice. Course. And uh, I don't know. I just I saw those guys do it, and Ryan was just sitting there with his big freaking smile on his face and just whatever. It was hilarious. And I think the next day I, 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 I was like, you know what? I'm just going to roll by Goodwill and see, uh, see if what they were talking about actually exists, if there's stuff that – that you can buy for a dollar and sell for 20. And um, I don't remember the first thing I bought. I think it was, um, uh, maybe it was like a Burton snowboard, uh, like a vintage a dollar, a vintage yeah. Burton uh, fleece pullover, I think. Um, a vintage Burton fleece pullover, that was the first thing you bought. I think so. Yeah, because I because the the main thing that I got from their channel was like you got to buy like cool stuff that people are gonna want, and you and you're gonna have to buy like name brand stuff. So I was out there. I was looking for like I think in my first haul I got like a couple North Face things. Um, I got the um, I got the Burton thing, the Burton pullover. Uh, a couple pair. I think I might have grabbed like a pair of shoes here or there. Like my first haul was maybe like ten items, um, okay. and I and I just you know I sat down with my phone. I took a couple pics, threw them up, and then like, and then when you hear that first like cha ching on your phone, you're like, oh my god, this is amazing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, but it's it's been fun, man. I've just been. It, it's almost like this weird balance between like the retail therapy of it because you get to go out and just buy a whole bunch of stuff, but you don't have to invest a whole lot of money and, and you're buying stuff and getting that cool, like instant gratification, but then you get to flip it over and sell something you bought for $2 for 20. And it's just, and, and how can you not, how can that not make you feel warm and fuzzy inside, you know? Absolutely. I mean, the, the ability to take something that's been tossed off and create value from it is the magic of this. We're all like these little elves that kind of <laughs> manage our... We have this these information pools that we kind of go out, gather, drive, you know. I don't know why you picked the name Death Pile Thrift, but it... <laughs> It had well, it, it was. Uh, it, I think that was from a uh, like a 10k on the bay. Like he always talks about his death piles. I I just thought, like I got a big kick out of it, and uh, it was kind of like a a more edgy thrift name. <laughs> I, like literally, it was just like <laughs> oh death pile thrift, whatever. But uh, yeah. but for a while, even when like for the first month or two, like when I started getting into it a little more seriously, I ended up with like. 
a pile of clothes in the middle of like the living room that I hadn't listed. And I was like, oh, this is the death pile. This is like, this is what's going to slow me down. So I need to start churning through this stuff. And like that weekend, like Saturday through Sunday, I think I had maybe like 50, 50 or 60 things. And I just, I just churned everything out. I blasted through them, took pics, posted everything. And like to have everything in your possession listed is, is like just a really good feeling. So. Um, Absolutely. I mean, you wouldn't just take, Five dollar, ten dollar, and twenty dollar bills, and just put them in a pile in the corner. Yeah, like you're not re you're not reselling unless you're reselling, which means you're listing. Exactly, you're a buyer unless yeah. you're resell. There's yeah. nothing wrong with being a buyer. Like, I'm I am a very I'm not a materialist in any fashion, but I do have a weird eye for things, and I try to bring my perspective to the things that I sell. So I yeah. pick out things that kind of make my eye sparkle. But that I have no attachment to anything in my inventory. Once, if it gets purchased with my business credit card, it is for sale yeah. instantly. Yeah. There's no, doesn't go anywhere else, doesn't get worn, doesn't get touched, doesn't get anything. It right. gets put into, so I'll kind of go into a little bit of depth about my business, which I haven't done on YouTube before, um, I used to have death piles, <laughs> and uh, I didn't know how to deal with them. So what I did is I put an ad on Facebook, and I said, "Hi, can I? I'd like to. Do you know me? I'd like to teach you how to make twenty bucks an hour. Reach out." I bought three light cubes, and uh, I got three people who wanted to make twenty bucks an hour or similar to that. And all three of those people are still working for me now. April, I had roughly 150 items in inventory. Wow. So I used to pick big, hunt and hunt and hunt, and my maximum was 20, and I needed to make at least 150 on that item. So I would just hit the streets. I'd go to every estate sale, every garage sale, and find those items. It was just tiring and stressful and I was like people are selling these other items too like things out let's let's figure out some fashion things let's figure out how I can leverage that two dollars per item because that's what I pay in you know five or six hundred dollars in sales per day right now I'm doing ten thousand a month in sales on eBay and uh, yeah I'm my goal is to by the end of next year to do a million in two thousand a million in sales on eBay in two thousand nineteen. That's awesome, and you could do it. Yeah, I, and I mean, there's people doing it. It's it's crazy. There's people doing twenty million. There's people yeah. doing. You know, I, I I'm not. I'm just trying to figure out how to inject myself into the market. So, so I have this 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 kind of stream philosophy, right? So it, it's like a river and it's moving. So you have, you have molecules basically that are moving through this sales entity or this sales matrix, right? You're going to be able to inject yourself into that sales matrix some way. If you walk into a thrift store, you're injecting yourself into that sales matrix in a small way, right? Right, right. If you're going to where there's liquidations, you're going into a bigger way, in a bigger way, in a bigger way. So I'm trying to devise ways of, I know Goodwill is a multi-million dollar company and, and they, they somehow get tons of donations. I don't want to get donations. I want to pay you for the things that you have. I want to pay you for the valuable things that you have somehow. Right. I'm not sure how I do that yet, yeah. but to get more penetration into the market, because obviously to be able to do a million dollars a year, be able to acquire the goods and I'm like I have a post consumer philosophy uh, I'm a Portland hippie so <laughs> new stuff I think private label brings no value whatsoever I do sell on Amazon but I but I don't like the platform I think it's toxic oh you do uh, I probably, yeah I probably shouldn't say that <laughs> no I mean like it's it, it's interesting to hear different perspectives on that and that's and that's one thing that like you know, once you start doing a little resale on eBay, then you start watching videos and 
your 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 YouTube's uh, recommended videos become infected with you know all these uh, Amazon FBA uh, Poshmark like all these different uh, channels. Um, yeah. But the Amazon FBA is like a for me as a designer is an interesting uh, concept because you can literally create and build your own brand from scratch around a specific product and and sell it on Amazon for you know whatever. What the true question is on that stuff, what is the cost of doing that? And what is the cost versus the I sell used electronics, they're only boxed. And if you look at the quality of the things that I sell, they're very, very, very high. I have a hundred percent positive feedback on eBay. Uh -huh. And I am completely dedicated to customer satisfaction. My philosophy about customer service is like two sentences. Treat every customer like their own your only customer and that that customer is your grandmother. Right. <laughs> That's a good way to that do it. That is my philosophy. <laughs> but I can do that on Amazon because they they really screw a lot of things up. Yeah, and there's that I mean once you get into the Amazon it, there's a there's there's a wall between you and the customer. So exactly. you're And why why would I want to create a wall between me and my customer? It, it stops future business. I have right. tons of repeat customers on eBay, and I and I still do all of that business through eBay because I love the platform, and I and I always have loved the platform. I think it's a, an undervalued platform. Um, they have had their problems, you know, being PayPal being part of of eBay for such a long time really mess them up. They didn't have to focus on eBay, so they let it slide. Yeah. Created problems for eBay sellers and eBay buyers and PayPal at large, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. Now, the best time to ever be selling on eBay. Like, if you, if anybody's watching this video right now, eBay, since like 2005 or 2006, when things got all turgid and turbid and miasmic, Get back on there. They're doing their marketing. Their their yeah. their brand. Their branding is good, and it's not false. They're not making promises that can't happen. Yeah. No. I, it seems I like a, a very good a, a good ecosystem right now, and they are advertising and and um, I mean I'm just a a drop in the bucket right now, but it seems like they're making changes for the good when it comes to like the seller dashboard and and just the changes that I've seen in the short amount of time. Um, they're making it easier for sellers. Um, and I mean, the amount of, they have more products than Amazon, right? I mean, I think they have like over a billion products. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So that's, that's fascinating to me. And, uh, and what only 20% of the products on Amazon are, uh, used. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm uh, eBay. Uh, I heard that in like a talk. It, it was yeah. I heard that seventy percent of products sold on eBay are new products. Are new. So that's that. That, did, that didn't make any sense to me. I like at, ever since I, I've always thought from the beginning that eBay was a, you know, Sally selling shit out of her garage. <laughs> you know, it was like I mean, that was always the that was always the 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 right out of my mind of it. You know? I am um, I'm neglecting the chat here, so I'm going to go and open up the chat here real quick. I didn't want to uh, – bear with me here for a second. I'm yeah. Open up the chat. It says I'm offline, live stream offline, but it says I have one viewer. I think I have – it probably is – I had a window up before it's probably mine I just had a window open to see if the stream was running it's live yeah we're live cool perfect I just want, didn't want to neglect like that can you hear me yeah I can hear you perfect oh yeah so yeah the wall between you why would you want to have a wall between you and your customers and possible customers Amazon has shown a propensity to for everyone's customers with Amazon basics buying up whole foods and restricting all of the brands that were whole foods I mean that kind of thing 
that really, really, really chapped my ass so hard. Yeah. So I've been selling CDs on Amazon since 2007, okay? And uh, I don't know how long on FBA. I really don't. A long time. Well, they, they basically said to me, and show us that the, you know your, your these CDs are legitimate. You guys are housing this stuff, and you don't know it's legitimate. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, why is the burden of proof on me? It's already in your warehouse. It's already been cataloged. It's already ready for sale. So then they said, no, these aren't good enough, and they charged me to send all my items back to me. Seven hundred CDs. Wow. What? What kind of CDs are these? Like music CDs, blank CDs, music CDs. Yeah, blank media is not restricted in any fashion. But to come along and and uh, well, fuck you. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yesterday I just don't. I don't like the mentality. I could see if they said. What you have in inventory, you can sell, but you can't send any more stuff in because you're not an authorized dealer. Right. Totally understandable. But yeah. to step on people's toes like that and just not to even care. So what, what happened today on um, Marketplace that maybe people don't even know about yet? We have a couple of viewers viewing it. It looks like. Uh, so people spent thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours to get approved in grocery and beauty mm -hmm. anybody else just go find like a random product and apply and you'll get approved beauty on all unrestricted products on on restricted so beauty and grocery are restricted categories right in a restricted category you have restricted products within an unrestricted category you have restricted products so let's say you look up Tom's toothpaste right now, which is a beauty product, right. and you ask to be to be able to sell it, it'll automatically approve you. That hasn't happened to, since like two thousand six. Today, that's why. Just, so, so how, why did that gate open? Nobody knows. They don't know if it's a glitch. Somebody just discovered it randomly. That's cool. <laughs> and I, I learned this from Thrift Shop Hustler. I randomly watched. He he's he's an awesome dude. He makes awesome videos. He gave like he gave me the confidence to jump onto YouTube. I went on his, his show. I've been thinking about doing YouTube for a while, and I went and like did his show, and it was so much fun. But I don't want to do a show by myself. Like I want to find guys like you who want to put it on in the marketplace and really tell some interesting stories and have a great time. You know? Yeah, absolutely. That's what other this is people all about. Exactly. Like. I didn't do this to be a, a goofball in my basement. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a nice, you know, it's a nice uh, uh, symptom of what we're doing. You just get to fuck off in your basement and chat with other people that, and that's the thing. It's like, I don't, you know, my wife, uh, she, she's, after I started selling products, like she was kind of interested in it and we've actually done a little bit of, um, you know, she'll come out and thrift with me now. It's kind of cool. It's like, you know, I don't know anything about women's products, so I send her over there, and she'll come back with, you know, some some nice name brand stuff. So that's kind of cool. But I don't really have anybody to talk to. You know, I tell some people that I, you know, my associates or people that I work with, whatever, I'm like, hey, you know, I sell stuff on eBay, and they're like, oh, that's nice. And I'm like, you want to talk about it? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> just... This is the way to shoot the shit with, and it's it's like you know it's great watching all these eBay videos, but that's kind of a one way street, you know. Um, but you get to interact with all these, a lot of these uh, the resellers on Instagram and stuff like that. So I've you know I've chatted with Rally Roots and and Ten K on the Bay and um, some of the other resellers, but it, you know it, it's a really cool community, and it's it's a it's just a fun, it's just such a fun thing to do and, and like you said it's you're 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 rescuing stuff that otherwise would have been you know destined for a landfill or not appreciated for the value that you give it exactly and you can bring a high a much higher value like you can bring it to an audience a much greater audience that can 
pay more and is willing to provide that value. I'm yeah. scary looking at <laughs> I don't want to read that out loud. Hazelheart Vintage is in the chat. She's awesome. Uh, I bought this amazing t-shirt. That's over here. It's Spuds McKenzie shirt. I think it's like pre-Budweiser Spuds McKenzie too, which makes it so awesome. She sells amazing women's fashion, which I don't know anything about, but I do know I about men. I don't know a damn thing, yeah. I do know about men's fashion. Not that much. I mean, I'm wearing a janky t-shirt and a Cub Scout shirt right now. <laughs> I mean, I can't right now, so. It's all um, you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, check this. Here, I'll, I'll grab a quick. This is a cool thing I found the other day. Oh, great. Show you a quick one. I found it's a, uh, it's a vintage, uh, like old school. I don't know if you can see that. It's Peter. It's an old school Peterbilt. Oh, sweet! I love anything transport. Yeah, so it's an old school, like just straight up uh, Peterbilt trucker jacket. Uh, it's made by Tonkin. It's just like I mean, when I picked it up, it smelled like you know, just what a thousand miles of driving and and cigarettes and all that stuff. I washed it up. It's a nice. It's a nice jacket, but that was like, I know those are the, those are the like. It's yeah. You could find like. I I'm listening to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you two transportation related uh two transportation related men's uh, fashion items here. One of them is from the uh, Union Pacific Railroad. I, I just uh, I'm gonna grab this I'm gonna grab this because well if we're gonna go into a men's fashion discussion I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab yeah well, might as well you know why not uh, throw up a couple items you know so if you know about old school fila and any of these box logo things I can't even find another example of this and and I'm okay at finding stuff this is fila alpine huh. check this shit out it's a it's a fila 1990s skiing jacket. Feel is that wait, is it like a wool? Is it like a wool puffer jacket from back in the day? Yeah, it's got some. It doesn't have any fill in it, but it's like uh, it's it, it appears to be Gore-Tex or something very similar to Gore-Tex. Uh, the shell is 100% nylon, and uh, yeah, it's a large size and a great. I mean, the colorway is awesome. Um, but yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I kind of, um, I love the, oh, nice. <laughs> Harley Davidson stuff is great. Um, I mean, you could always find, you know, like they call it your bread and butter items, but I love the, um, I love those weird vintage things and like, what, what's the, what's the, what's the best, like, what's the best flip, like, Maybe what's like the cheapest thing you found that sold for the most money ever in my life? Uh, I don't know. Sh sure. <laughs> That's like a total random off topic question, but I will answer that question. I don't know why it came out of, I was just thinking about, I don't know. Cheapest thing you bought that you got the most profit out of. Okay. So I was in an estate sale. I lived in Argentina for two years when my kid was born. My wife is Argentine. And uh, we got free health insurance there. I was doing estate sales there. I got into a network of estate sale companies. It took me a long time. I had to chisel my way in. Get like they, you got to be bona fide. They don't because there's a lot of like robbery type events. I got robbed at gunpoint. We'll go into that later. But, That's not cool. Uh, no, at all. So I go into this estate sale, and it's it's kind of a slightly janky house, and I find a pair of cufflinks. And they have, I start finding cufflinks. The first one is Italian colors, right? And it's got um, a bundle of sticks and an ax. It's, it, they're fascist cufflinks. And I'm like, I think that's the symbol for fascism. Like, this is weird. Yeah. So I start looking around and I start finding like more cufflinks, more cufflinks, more cufflinks. And then I find a basket of sewing, uh, like, you know, needles and threads and shit like that. And I pull this shit up, and it and I read just tiny under the thing, Cartier, 
0 0.850. They, uh, they're, they're about this big, platinum, mother of pearl with about a half carat diamond in the center. I put them in my hand and I say, you know, I have some other stuff, a couple of other, I didn't buy the fascism cufflinks, but I did buy some like interesting that was, engineering stuff. That was the stuff. real prize. You, you really missed out on the fascism cufflinks because those would probably be really hot. <laughs> I don't <laughs> fuck with that, dude. Um, <laughs> I don't mess with that stuff. Uh, so I, I hold them, like I'm buying the stuff and I have them in my hand and I'm like, my hand is almost shaking and I hand them and, I, and I'm like this. And I was like, how much for these? And she looks at them and she's like, uh, 80 pesos. And at that time that was, the ten, it was 10 pesos to the dollar. So they were $8. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, Put them on eBay. I believe I put them in an auction starting at a thousand, and I think they went to like fourteen seventy five. And uh, as far as like, it's not the most expensive thing I've ever sold, certainly, but it was the craziest like flip because yeah, I, I you know it was an estate sale company. I have no reason to like tell them what it is, you know. I, and and yeah, I'm no, not an honest it's, person. I was like, I held them in my hand. She picked them up. Right. And she said eight dollars, and I said okay. You know, listen, it's not know. it's not your responsibility to you know tell them the backstory of every product you find. It, it it they're they're sitting at the cash register. It's their call. You know, if they knew, yeah. great. If not, absolutely. See you later. Yeah, I mean, so on that same level, one of my best. I haven't flipped it yet, but I showed you that that these shoes like ultra rare. I mean, these. This is state sale. This is in Portland. Three pairs of 1965 issue, new old stock floor shine. These are made of a type of leather. So there's two really, really high end types of leather that they made men shoes from in in that era. One is called shell cordovan or shell cordovan, and it's made from horse leather. And if this shoe was shell cordovan, it would be roughly fourteen hundred dollars. There were there were no shows. These, these are called, and you can see the checks in it. This is called Czech Scotch. This is a very high end bovine leather. You can see that they're unlaced. Mm -hmm. So I paid six dollars a pair for each of the three pairs, and you're not getting them from me for less than six hundred. Yeah, and that's amazing. I'm gonna find this shoe again, and I'll wait for the right buyer. So this yeah. was an insane flip. So that was you know uh, eighteen dollars to eighteen. Yeah, let's that's insane. Let's say yeah. 1500 Let's say I decide to sell them for five, so it's 1500 Right. Um, how, like, did you did you start at uh, at just garage sales and thrift stores, or did you already, or had you already kind of had an in with, like, the estate sales and saw that as, like, a, a, like a good way to source? I love estate sales because they just, they're often, what I'll, what I, what, how I pick estate sales, the, the cherry estate sales almost 60, 70% of the time is the ones that pop up on Thursday and are, they're, the, the estate sales going on Friday or Saturday. They have no time to do anything. They just start putting prices on shit. You walk yeah. in, you try to get there first, you have a bag in your hand, and you just start throwing stuff in bags. Sometimes yeah. I'll hire a second guy to come with me. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's one thing. I've... This is what we're looking for. You go in that room. I'm going in that room, grab everything you can. Right. And I, I just don't care. I just buy it. Uh, right. I'll figure it out later. Like a lot of this stuff that's coming from like the baby boomers, you know, 50, 60, 70 houses here in Portland, you're just not going to find this stuff again. So yeah. even if maybe you overpaid a little bit for it, you're still going to make money on it. And even if you don't make money on it, you are going to provide the value of having unique items that's going to draw other people. Um, that's going to draw other people into your other sales. So you saw that I have. You said fifteen hundred, but but I actually have eighteen hundred items in inventory, and about three hundred drafts. So every day I try to draft fifty items. Uh -huh. You know, and and I sell about twenty items a day. My average sales price is. Uh, I went to three-day handling time because I was selling stuff too fast and I was overwhelmed with orders. Like one day I got like forty orders and I was and I was like losing my mind. 
So That's a lot of uh, packing and shipping. <laughs> I do all the packing and shipping myself, even though things, as you can see behind me, like really, really organized in a, in a very specific fashion. I still have to go through the process of doing it, you know? So yeah. uh, I had to, I had to increase my handling time. Cause I just like, I want to, I kind of freaked out. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is really happening. I, I, I worked so hard to make it happen. And then I, 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 I never want to, my philosophy is to over promise, over promise, the opposite of that. Under promise, under promise, over deliver. Yeah. yeah. If I can't do that, I need to figure out how, yeah, and ha what did you say your average sale price was for your items? One dollars. What is it? I'm sorry. Twenty one. Forty one. Forty one. That's really yeah, the average sale price is forty one. And you do free shipping, correct? I do free shipping on everything, but sometimes I go. Back. I don't know. Everybody. So I went to the eBay Open in 2007. Uh, 2007. I went to the eBay Open this year. <laughs> yeah. Nicole State shouted it out. I had no idea it existed, even though they sent me an email. Because I, I don't read every, every. I get. Okay, let's let's let me show you something. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show you something. Look at my look at my email inbox. You see that number? Twenty two thousand. Yeah, that's uh. Yeah. You you might want to catch up on those. <laughs> <laughs> so, I get a lot of emails because <laughs> I sell a lot of stuff. And people ask me a lot of, some days I'll get a hundred questions, even though I put measurements in everything. Um, people still ask me tons of questions because I have tons of things for sale that people actually want. That's what you want. You want to have in stock things that people actually want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's crazy. I, I can't. <laughs> if I had an email, like an inbox that looked like that, I would probably just have ulcers all the time. Well, I mean, that's my question email box is it goes to a different I, I have I have that's a combination of like 10 different emails. I have a, an email for Amazon questions. I have an Amazon a email for Amazon orders. I, you know, I have an email box for everything. And yeah, that ironically is like very little spam. But yeah, every time something PayPal happens, it goes to a, I don't check the email that PayPal stuff comes to. But I just have an email, so like I just have a record of it, you know. Yeah. In both places, so I try to keep some, try to keep really good records on everything because it seems like that's how people get uh, housed. I'm gonna go back to yeah. the chat, yeah. Do you um? How, how did you? Holy shit! Uh, Wait, oh, hold on one sec. Hazel Hearts Vintage bought a 400 piece clothing lot yesterday. And a 500 piece clothing lot last month. Hazel, I mean, uh, Kayla, do you have um, right or drafters or no? Do you do all that yourself? Because if you do, I you, you need like buying you coffee. <laughs> like I'm just gonna send you coffee, buying cards or something. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a lot of items. Like. I think like the the most I ever had to ship out one in one day was like six or seven items, and I was like, "How am I going to get this all done?" <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just starting, dude. I'm, I'm everything is everything is. No, it's I'm great a, to have the perspective of somebody who is starting. I just, I've, I first I sold my first item on eBay in 2001. Uh huh. So I've been I've been in the eBay game a long time. I just never had capital. I never had confidence, and I and I was I was just a big baby. I just didn't control. I didn't control my own life. I didn't make my own decisions. I let people's opinions guide my existence. And like I from two thousand one, I knew that this is what I was great at, and I needed to do. And I denied it for till last year even though like i've had 150 to 200 items in inventory for the last seven or eight years right yeah yeah and, I, and i've been involved in other business ventures i helped found a, uh, a delivery company here in portland like a hot food delivery company i've i've done all i've done a lot of weird business ideas i started a mushroom growing farm uh, I'm a botanist. The, the the reason my name is Mighty Mushroom is because you know mushrooms are the great. This light is fucked. 
the mushrooms are the are the great like recycler, and I and I just feel like I'm a recycler, and I'm a botanist. So, and I, and I was like really drunk one night. There you go. This logo, this logo in my head, and I was like, that's my logo. There you go. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> Krillin, yeah. dude, Krillin, you're always in. Uh, you're always in. Uh, who? Uh, Glenn's always talking about you, right? Isn't his name Glenn? The uh, the guy who what is his name? Garage flips. Yeah, um, I like garage flips. I'm from New Orleans originally, so I'm always I've been trying to get him to get me on his channel because we're both like, I am Cajun. Like I'm ethnic. My ethnicity is is Cajun. So we're we're a, we're a uh, we're a rare breed. <laughs> Right on. It's a, it's it's an odd ethnicity. People don't understand it. Yeah, we're just like mutts. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so oh, I was, I was oh gonna, yeah. Go ahead. No, go no, ahead. You go. Um, I, I forgot. You, don't let me stall. No, you're you're not, you're not gonna stall. Stall. We have plenty to talk about. I want you to tell me an interesting or funny story that has to do with reselling. That's that's what I want you to do. Um, Lonnie, Lonnie. I guess I'll I'll start with my like. I, I, it's pretty recent since I'm a newbie, but my my best flips so far. Um, I was I. I was at uh, I was at Goodwill. I I typically try to do. I stick to like. Uh, just like the half price days because um, I feel like Goodwill has definitely caught on to what's going down and their prices have just creeped up slowly over the past you know couple of years. I've always gone to Goodwill. So I, I, it just feels like they're overcharging for certain items. So I usually only go on a half price day. So I was just, I was cruising through. It was one of my biggest haul days and I was just grabbing everything and, and there was a lot of good jackets and, and shirts and shoes and all this stuff. And like on my way out, I was like, oh, I'm just going to cruise. Because it was half price day. There's people everywhere. It's hard to move around. And I was like, I'm going to swing by this shoe rack one more time. And as I was going by the shoe rack, I saw like this just white pair of shoes, but they looked like pretty nice and they kind of stood out. And I just kind of leaned over and looked in and it said like Prada on the top of them. Whoopa. I'm like Prada, sweet. Like those are those look cool. Maybe they'll maybe I can get like a couple bucks for them. And I I grabbed them and I uh, I did a quick search on eBay and they were the Prada America's Cup sneakers that retailed for like six hundred dollars and the price tag on them was ten. So I got them for five. Ooh, and so uh, you didn't buy Pradas at full price? Are you fucking kidding me? What's that? <laughs> Somebody buy Pradas for ten dollars. You have to be insane. Yeah, I, I, uh, th so that th that was like one of the coolest things that happened because that was that was one of the first thing first things that I found that was like I bought it for five bucks and I put it up on uh, eBay the next day for I put it up at like a hundred and twenty just because they had a couple like little nicks on them. They weren't perfect condition, but. Um, I probably sold them within the week for a hundred bucks. So that was like, holy shit, this is so cool. You know, I just bought these shoes for five bucks and sold them to some guy in New York City for a hundred, and I made him happy. I made me happy. It was just, it was just a cool thing. I see that. I what, love what you got there. I love the smell of money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I'm gonna tell you a story. And I'm going to show you a piece that came out of this one. This, uh, that was that's on the designer tip. I, I posted this on Instagram a couple of days ago. I've had this for a couple of months now. So there was this. There's a couple of goofball estate sale companies here. They they're just so full of shit. They they pretend to know that they know something, but they're so Stone Age backwards. This is a 1,200-year-old uh, medicine bowl from, like, a tribe really kind of associated with the Anasazi. You can see it. there was a there was a head here, but it got broken off. Probably, you know, this was excavated somewhere. You can see the interior, how it's all 
worn down. This is, you can see that. Uh, yeah. So this is like, this is like pre-Columbian, and uh, I, there was a there was a sticker of seven dollars on the bottom of this thing, and I asked the guy what it was, and he told me it was an ashtray. <laughs> well, I mean that's that's the usual, you know, something shaped like that. Sure. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something else. This is uh, this is amazing. This was in the same sale. It's a fetish. It's a it's a it's a uh, it's from the it's 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 as for far as my research goes, it's from the Chingu tribe. It, it, they're like an Amazonian tribe. This wood, this thing weighs like five pounds, but it's wood. And this is a plant resin that it was painted with. These are macaw feathers, and then you can see like there's some other tiny feathers there, and then yeah, there's a glass really cool. bead. Yeah, that thing's crazy. So this is really, really old too. So I was I was waiting for the sale to start. There was a bunch of people in line. They lost the list, right? Uh, they lost the list, but I signed up on the new list. So I got in like first. So the house, the guy was a world traveler and he disappeared. He was gone for like 10 years and the house went to probate, right? And I got, you know, got sold or whatever, and then they did this estate sale. Yeah. And uh, so I'm one of the first ones in the house, and I try to go upstairs, and there's a fucking raccoon. And the <laughs> raccoon jumps up, and it's like... <laughs> it starts screaming at me. Like, out, people everywhere. The raccoon runs downstairs, starts bouncing around, bouncing up the walls. There's, like, knives and cups and glass and shit everywhere it's knocking like knives off the counter and like finally it jumps through this this like in the back in the by the back door there's like a hole in the floor like i don't know maybe the fucking raccoon dug it in there i have no idea the raccoon goes through the hole and like disappears like everyone's standing there and i'm like i'm like still picking <laughs> <laughs> it didn't even phase you right <laughs> I was the guy who got attacked by the raccoon. Like I ran downstairs. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's an awesome story. I mean, those. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! When you've been doing this a while, you come into like weird situations, like when you stick your hand in a blob of jelly at the bins or something like that. Oh, jeez, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Do you, have a, do you have a Goodwill outlet or what they call the bins in uh, Phoenix? Uh, yes, but I haven't been to I haven't been to the uh, to the legendary bins just yet. I have. It's funny because um, I'm on. I live on kind of the west side of Phoenix, and there's probably there's one right by my house. There's one about twenty twenty five minutes away, and there's another one um, kind of downtown, and that. I hit those three or four pretty regularly, and it, it seems like when I go to the Goodwills, like on the half price Saturdays and stuff, I don't see, or at least I'm not on my side of town. I'm not seeing a whole lot of resellers or people who look like resellers because um, I'm finding some pretty good stuff. And good. the people that I see go in, I can tell that they're just buying stuff for themselves. They're not, you know, they're buying shoes for their kids. They're buying pants for work you know they're not they're not you know curating the items they're not pulling out their phones and searching for yeah. prices and things it, like that you'll so never see me pull out my phone and look for anything i don't do that there's only one category that i do that with and it's uh vinyl records uh -huh. just because i don't understand them at all so right. i will it i'm if I walk in with an agenda, and if that agenda doesn't get met, I start to divert yeah. to other areas. And I, there's never a will that I walk out with $100 in profit ever. Like, I, I don't ever think that's ever happened. But I, what, I, what I started to do is, um, and I would suggest you doing this, is it, these are two main suggestions. 
donate some things of multiple categories that you can monitor and see how long it takes for donations to come into the store. Uh, okay, That will tell you how much manpower they have to get regular pricing, to get accurate pricing. One. Two, go every day uh, at two different times or what you'll figure out is when they bring the new stuff out. Right. I've scoped out every Goodwill in the area, and I know when – I know the tendencies of the people. I know them by name. When I walk in, they know me. I've just been doing it for so long, they know me. They know what I do, how I do it. They tell me where – like somebody the other day, I walked in, and he's like, dude, there's a Supreme shirt. And nice. I was are you kidding me? He's like, yeah, it's $8. That's amazing. <laughs> it was yeah, like, I mean, and that's another thing is like once they start to know you and, and you can start to form like some relationships with these people, then, you know, yeah, they're bored. that's just, that's just another, yeah, they want to uh, chat with somebody. They want to, they want to have a chat and that's another they advantage. I love helping people out. One of my, one of the main guys who comes and picks with me, he's a 10 year Goodwill veteran. He worked at the boutiques. He knows a ton. But he's just used to that grind, and I'm trying to like, I'm trying to get him into like, I'm like, dude, I will get you a shelf to put into your house, that shelf, to to start making your life better. Like, all you need to do is put forty items on that shelf, and start from there. That's yeah. I started with one item. He's like, how do you do it, man? How do you do it? It's like. Every single day, I wake up and figure it out. And what people, the, the convention of like the middle class convention here is gone. It's done. Like you have to figure it out yourself. And you have to yeah. adapt. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to be somebody else's, you know, employee or whatever. And the, the, the people who work for me or with me, I, I really consider it working with me. My contractors, if they work well, they make twenty dollars an hour, and I think that's an awesome rate. And it's not their primary source of income, but I can provide them more than they can deal with. So, right. so how how do you have your your how do you have that system set up? Do they work? Do they work out of your house? Do they work out of their houses? What what are they doing? Are they shooting pictures? Are they drafting? What are you guys doing? So they're so they're drafters. So one. One actually does some pricing because she likes it, and she is an eBay seller herself. She's younger, and she'll she drafts and she does some rough pricing. Uh, I require less pictures from her, but uh, so these are two different experimental models I'm doing right now. One less pictures, more research. One less research, more pictures. Right? Mm -hmm. They both mm -hmm. get two dollars per listing, and. I provide them a light cube and uh, an iPad. Now, uh, they don't have to use those things, but I'm not going to pay them if the pictures suck, so they do. You know, they can use whatever tools they want. I just lend them some of my equipment if they want to use it. Right. But they use, you know, their, you know, they use their own space and their own equipment. So what would happen is, uh, and I also pay them a small trip. They come and pick up uh, 50 items, right? And it's their first pickup. So it's their first pickup. Uh, they come. I give them the trip fee because they came. Then they take the items and they process them. They bring them back. I give them their trip fee. And the, the, the items, they give me an invoice. So I pay them in cash and I get a, an invoice from them. You don't get money from me unless you give me an invoice. Then they take the items and they just do It's the boomerang effect. Mm -hmm. You know? So things are coming out and coming back and coming out and coming back. And if, like, I'm constantly, because they're independent contractors and they're independent business people, I don't want to, I want, I also provide them with other people who, I have two people here in the region, two other business people like myself, who provide them with um, some business as well. So they're not just doing business with me, but I'm their primary. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they yes. might get one a month from the other people, but they get five a month from me. Right. So, um, cool. That's, a, that's interesting to know. Cause like when I started, you know, diving into this eBay thing, when I was watching 10 K on the Bay talk about like hiring people to do his listing, I was like, holy shit, people do that. Like, 
and then I started dig, like looking into like you know, um, you know some of the bigger resellers, and and then and then I, you know, it just it starts to open up your mind to how businesses work and and how to scale and and all the just every little detail that you have to have in place for a larger operation to work. And uh, I thought that was really interesting and. You know, obviously, you have to have be able to sell items that can bear the cost of hiring people, or you have to have the the volume of to be able to 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 cover the cost of people or the reputation. So, so I I, I look at the market in the sold market, and I price twenty to thirty percent above that. The what things sold for in the past, I can bond, but and people will try to say, "Well, I found one for fourteen ninety five. It's like, "Well, go get it." Yeah, it's there. Cool. I'm not going to stop you. If you want to get it in two days from a reputable seller who's going to take care of you, order it from me. If you don't, it's fine. Like I'm okay with that. Uh, I do take offers on a lot of things, um, but my inventory is so large and the quality of my items is so great that I don't really have to. You know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I have a right here in front of me i have a bin of rain spooner and jams world shirts uh the average price of that bin is 78 dollars and uh i've you know that bin has 35 shirts in it i've already sold five and uh so i know that my pricing isn't off the wall it's like if you want to if you want to crush ray a crush japanese rayon shirt you're not just going to find it anywhere. It, I mean, I, I've got some of the rarest shirts in there. And, you know, I paid good money for them, but I, mean, I didn't pay anywhere near that. But also, it takes a long time for them to sell. At the same time, like, I, I don't want to bring value specifically through price. I want to bring value through uniqueness. Right. Especially on eBay, they're, like, they're selling stuff dirt cheap because they want to get rid of it, and that's fine. But you'll notice that their reputations are terrible because... There's, they don't have any motivation to ship it or send it. And what you see isn't always the truth. I mean, some of those orders are never fulfilled, too. So, yeah. How do you um, know your Led Zeppelin shirt is legit? <laughs> is that what somebody said in the chat? Yeah, Krillin. Krillin, do you want to see it? Yeah, uh, here I'll, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go grab the Grateful Dead shirt here. I almost the there was a uh, like I said in the chat there was like a. Was it? I think it was a Rolling Stones I know concert shirt that I, I almost grabbed the other day, but uh, I was kind of in a hurry. I didn't have a chance to check it out and see if it was uh, in good quality or not. But yeah, there's tons of concert shirts out there. I mean, I think I've seen like a I have a lot porn of shirts. Finding concerts, Elliot. Like yeah. I, I have to look and look and look and look. I'm gonna go grab this. The, the 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 Led Zeppelin shirts with a lister right now. I think. Let me let me just do a quick check. I, I know I have the. Um, I think I have the Grateful Dead shirt upstairs. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna go grab it real quick. Okay, I'll hang out with whoever's in the room. What does he get? Krillin's here. Sorry, I'm yawning, and I still have a couple hours of work to do. How's everybody doing in the chat? Kayla's probably trying to list all of her 400 items. <laughs> Sorry. I had some coffee. As you can see, it's now empty, so I got to... Let me, uh, I'm going to see if I, I don't know if I can screen share with, uh, I don't know if I can screen share with Google. I don't know if I can screen share with Google. Um... All right. I don't know oh, if I can screen share with this. Let me see here. Screen share with Hangouts? Oh, wow. With, uh, with uh, yeah, with Hangouts. Yeah, you should be able to. Um, okay. Hold on. Let me, um, let me see if those shirts are in drafts. Maybe Krilla can help me to see if these are real. Let me see. Let yeah, there's a screen share if you, like, 
uh, roll over your the screen on the left side, or at least it pulls up. New, new positive feedback since I checked last time. Thank you for careful packaging and fast shipping. A A A A A A A plus 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 plus. The first thing I do when I log into eBay is look at positive shipping. I'm like, I mean, the positive feedback. I'm like a pos- I'm like a cat. I like my tummy to be rubbed. <laughs> I love positive feedback. It just it, makes me so happy. It makes it all worthwhile, right? I, I, it's just such a small gesture, but I love it so much. Okay, let me look here. You know what's a pain, though, in drafts? You can't, let me see. Uh, you can't search for keyword in drafts? What? I probably have about, uh, just a heads up, I, call, I probably got about 10 more minutes left with you, and then Perfect. I'm going to I'm going to hop off yeah. and try to get this logo design finished up for tomorrow. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. I'm going to try to – let's do – why don't we do – let's continue with our conversation because let's do let, – we'll do we'll do concert shirts later, Krillin. We'll, maybe we'll do a show just on shirts and I'll have them ready because I don't want to have to go through uh, – I don't want to have to go – I need to go – I don't know if they're listed live or draft, but um, I will definitely show you both of those shirts. Hold me accountable to that fact. I will show you both of them. Uh, but right now, let's let's just let's finish up the show. Awesome show, uh, Elliot. It's it's really been it's really been awesome. This was a random occurrence. So I know you you, you I was the wrong guy that you found. <laughs> but uh, it ended so up. So two weeks ago on Hustler, the Thrift Shop Hustlers. Um, Saturday night show. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's awesome. I did my first YouTube appearance on his show, and then after this guy Death Pile and, and I had an awesome conversation. And I thought Elliot was Death Pile because his name is Death Pile Hustler. So I sent him a message. Hey, uh, my guest canceled. Do you want to be on the show tonight? He's like, Yeah. And then <laughs> I felt a weird vibe, like, dude. Because like, I'm just like, Hey, man. man. I'm not the dude, but I'll be on your show, man. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, I only have like seven items on my Instagram. This guy must really like my shit if he wants me to be on a YouTube show. Already. I do like your shit. Like Brown Label, Brown Label North Face is hard, really, really. Hard. Oh, dude, I love that stuff. I, th- oh my god, I love finding just cool shit. It makes me so happy. Awesome. Uh, well, I will tell you. Oh, here's a story. I'll tell you a quick story. I tell, fu- wait, dude, hold on one second. Tell a sure. story. Then tell everyone how to find you, and then uh, we'll we'll cut we'll close. Okay, and then we'll uh, we'll schedule another one of these because this is a lot of fun. Uh, dude, let's do every. Yeah, let's do every. Let's, yeah, let's do it. Um, so, here's a a warning for anybody who. I, this I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, but so I was at the I was at Goodwill. I was in the back. I saw like there were two. It was two external frame uh, brown label vintage uh, North Face, and brown label means it was made in the USA before North Face um, outsourced all their production to wherever they Thailand, Philippines, wherever they make that shit now. So really cool backpacks. They were in good condition. A little musty, a little dusty, but awesome. Um, I got them home and my first instinct is to try and like clean things and fuck with things and try to bring it back (laughs) to new, which uh, was a dumb thing. So I, I took one of the backpacks and I took the, the, the bag part off of the frame and I literally like to threw it in the, in the washing machine. (laughs) Uh, But what I didn't realize is the whole inside of, those vintage North Face bags are coated with like this. It, it's like a it's like a waterproofing stuff. It's like whatever. a polypropylene wax. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I put it in the washing machine. I pulled it back out, and all of that beautiful waxy stuff had just disintegrated and started to peel away, and I basically ruined it. Um, so I did. I did sell it. I didn't make any, I basically sold it for, um, I broke even on it. And the, the second one I made, I sold for maybe 50 or 60 bucks. I mean, I, I had a good price on it, but I picked them up for like seven bucks a piece. 
But uh, just be careful with vintage stuff if you're thinking about cleaning it because cleaning it could fuck it up even worse. Like, <laughs> you know, and I, I learned my lesson with that one because I, I, I just keep kicking I don't, myself. I, I keep kicking myself because it was, it was a perfectly awesome backpack that I could have gotten full price for. I mean, those types of backpacks go anywhere from, I mean, I saw some over at like $100, $120. I started mine around 75. I ended up selling 50 or 60 bucks, whatever. But I just, it hurt my heart that I had taken this like awesome vintage backpack and fucked it up. And, you know, yeah. Uh, that's my story of. of Aww. Well, you know what? All right, Krillin, later. So, yeah, dude. The, the uh, I took, I, I picked up a pair of like, original nike airs from like 1985 and flex them and they crumbled in front of my face uh. <laughs> and a thousand dollars turned into dust so you know live and let live <laughs> it happens but, you know every every sale is a new lesson right every every item is a a new opportunity to not fuck it up um, yeah, I mean, to, you have to learn. This whole game is about like knowledge and learning. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, man. Well, let's. Uh, all I'll, right, Alex. Let's it was aw awesome, great experience. I'm so glad you could come on the channel. We have 24 subscribers. I'm grateful for every 24 of them. All 24 of them can come on this show uh, and join in at any time so it's, all, it's only just the beginning for you i'm it's sure you're, you're only just be no i'm not i'm saying like i'm so i'm so like awestruck that i actually have 24 subscribers that i'm so happy about it yeah it's <laughs> awesome like, man it's i awesome. never thought anybody would watch anything i ever made but yeah anyway. <laughs> um yeah it's just just keep putting out good content and you know, you're an interesting person and you have good stories and that's all that matters, man. Just don't, don't be a, a wet bag on camera, you know, just oh, yeah. well, people want to be entertained, right? Well, with guests like you, it's easy to be entertaining. Let's do this again next week. All See right, you perfect. Have a great day and good luck, man. If you ever need help, also reach out and, and I'm here for you, man. Absolutely, man. I really appreciate it and uh, I look forward to the next time. Later.